also on the theme of, of, of trust. So the cross-check is a tool to enable publishers to make sure what they're publishing is original, make sure that they publish trustworthy content. Um, we've also been working for the last uh, couple of years on a new idea for what we're calling uh, cross-mark. And the basic idea behind it is that uh, content changes, and uh, when it does, uh, readers need to know about those those changes. So I think there's a common misconception with scholarly content that once something's published, uh, that's it. Uh, the version of record, as it's sometimes called, is called the content. It's just out there, and it's fixed in amber, and that's how it stays, and that the publisher's role is finished uh, when something is published. Um, but it's definitely not as simple as that, and, and Crossref really wants to try to get the idea across that the publisher's role does not finish on publication, that it's the publisher who has the main role in uh, maintaining uh, the content. So many things happen to content after it's been published. Corrections, enhancements, retractions, and, and the worst, which is even withdrawing of the article. Um, so this has always been the case. Uh, and it's the publisher's responsibility uh, to correct and update the literature that they, that they publish. And you know, it's, it's, it's always been a quote, it's always been the case, and this is a photo uh, that my colleague at Crossref took. He was visiting Oxford University Press in Oxford, and he saw this notice on a notice board, and it says, Product Recall, Important, Oxford Handbook of General and Adult Nursing. Um, and they say there's some serious errors in the book, and that anybody who's purchased it can get a full refund of the book. So that's uh, pretty worrying in that it's just posted on a notice board and in the print world, you know, so somebody may have bought that book and not know that it has lots of errors and they can uh, they can get their money money back for it. Um, and clearly, um, uh, you know, this, this highlights that uh, readers need to know uh, and that in the online world, of course, there's the opportunity uh, to, uh, to let readers know uh, about it. There's, as I talked about with cross-check, there's been a lot of things in the news lately about scientific fraud, increases in plagiarism, other types of misconduct. There's a very interesting blog uh, called uh, Retraction Watch, uh, and it started last year, and every few times a week uh, it's updated, and it highlights when uh, articles are retracted or withdrawn. And it's quite interesting when you start to, uh, uh, to watch this, um, how frequently it does, it does actually happen. And as I said before, there's some uh, uh, other news articles that show that it is uh, happening, happening more often. Uh, and so again, just to emphasize that what we're trying to do is get away from this idea that there's a final version of the article. If the common perception as well is uh, that the publisher's role finishes on publication, uh, then I think uh, the outcome won't be very good for the scholarly publishing industry as, as a whole. So when content changes, uh, uh, readers need to know. So there could just be an update to the article, uh, but it could be more serious. So it's important that uh, the information gets out there and posting a, a print piece of paper on a, on a bulletin board isn't, um, isn't a very good, uh, good way to do it. So this is an article from Science, uh, and the question here is, does this article have corrections? Because Crossroads research has shown that publishers obviously notify and can put online notices about corrections, but that they do it in a very inconsistent way. There's no standard way of doing this. And this, this article does have corrections. Um, over there on the left, it says corrections for this article, and the user can then click on it and, and, and find it. It's a bit off on the side, so it's not, not that easy to see. Uh, this one, 
uh, there's nothing in the left or right hand columns, uh, but the publishers put it up here at the top where it says uh, correction for this article has been has been published. Um, and here's an, another example. If you look for any kind of correction, you know, you look down the side, and up there you can't actually see any any corrections because it's slipped down below the page. So if you scroll down, you can then see over here it says uh, there's a correction uh, correction to that to that article. Um, and then if you have a PDF, uh, it's even more of a problem. Uh, if you've downloaded the PDF to a laptop, a researcher downloads a PDF, keep, and they keep it on their hard drive for six months, they have no idea of knowing if that article's uh, been, been corrected. Um, and there could be some uh, serious things that have happened with that content. So basically, Crossmark is designed to address these uh, problems, to emphasize the publisher has an ongoing role for maintaining content, and also that um, correction, a, a consistent way to notify users of corrections. So Crossref is a logo that identifies a publisher may contain copy of a piece of content, most likely the version of record of that content. And then importantly, clicking the logo tells you whether there have been any updates to that content and uh, if the copy you're looking at is one that's actually maintained uh, by the publisher, and also where the publisher maintained version uh, of that content uh, exists. In addition, other important uh, non-bibliographic information uh, can be included in this extra metadata that gets assigned with the, uh, the cross-marking. So to show it in action, We can see here that this is a standard journal article, and up in the top left, there's a crossmark logo, and it says, click for updates. So if I were online and, and moused over it, uh, what it says is it says, click here uh, to check the status of this document. So if I then click on that, using the DOI in the background, <coughs> this goes off and pulls from the Crossmark system, the, the, the most up-to-date information about this document. So it says, this document is current. If there are any updates, they'll be listed here. And then it gives some important standard information about the article, including um, the DOI as a persistent link uh, to, that, to that article. Now, of course, the user's already on the article, so they might not think that persistent link is, is, is very important. but there are many copies and many versions of, of content that can be around on the internet. But what happens if I click on one that actually has had a correction, the message changes and it says, an update is available for this article. And it gives you the information about the correction. Uh, and it says, this document is maintained by the publisher. So it's conserved, it's uh, instilling trust in the user. So it's enabling the user to have the information. So it's not saying, uh, because one of the uh, worst ways uh, to get somebody to trust you is to just say, hey, trust me. Uh, and the best way is to give them information on why they should trust you. So what we're trying to attempt here is, this is standard information that will increase the user's trust in the, uh, in the content itself. Now you can see up here on the right, there's also another tab there. If we click on that, this gives me extra information about the article. So Crossref is using this uh, area for the publisher to add whatever the information they think would be valuable. Uh, in this case, we have the received, accepted, and published dates. There's also a clinical trial registration number, and that little I number, if you click on that, um, you can go and get some more information uh, about that. So the publisher uh, can can label and put whatever information they want. So we're hoping that some standard things will emerge uh, without Crossref dictating what, what publishers should put in there. But here's just some ideas of what could actually go in there. So funding disclosures. Uh, so you could say that a grant from this agency funded this research that this article uh, is reporting on, conflict of interest, publication history, <coughs> links to data repositories. Peer review process, we think this may be a very important. 
that you could indicate that that article was double blind peer review. That could be very useful to the user to know that. Uh, also, that it's been in cross check, and you could also then indicate licensing status. You could say this is Creative Commons, it's an open license, it's uh, restricted, whatever the publisher uh, would like to do. 